Hear now this reading from the Gospel of Luke. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. So Jesus said, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. So on Wednesday morning, I was in the midst of reading my commentaries on this passage. I had a tall stack of books still on my desk to, to read through. I was enjoying the insights that I was learning about this parable, and I was prepared for hours more study. When I recalled that I had really liked a blog post I had read some months ago on this parable, so I went looking for it to see where I had saved it on my computer. I found it and reread it and then realized that it said everything I wanted to say this morning. And so I'm going to do something I've only done one or two times in my entire preaching life, and that is that I'm going to proclaim at length someone else's words. This reflection on the parable of the Good Samaritan was written by David R. Henson for the Pathios blog. He's an Episcopal deacon and a graduate of the Graduate Theological Union. Jesus doesn't really want you to be a good Samaritan. At least that's not the point of his story in this week's gospel. Unfortunately, when Christians hear this story, we think Jesus is asking us to be the unlikely do-gooders in the world who bind the wounds of strangers, pay medical bills of distant neighbors, offer unexpected compassion to the beaten and wounded traveler. In short, we have understood this parable as a call to boundary-crossing charity and that we are to be the charitable ones. As the world's wealthy and powerful, we also assume that we are the world's teachers and saviors. We believe this parable wants us to condescend to the broken and poor in order to save them. We believe that we are the Samaritans and that their salvation lies with us. It is a troubling assumption. As a result, we have transformed this subversive story into little more than a mushy morality tale about random acts of kindness to strangers that at its worst buttresses the damaging and pervasive charity industrial complex in American churches. We have whitewashed this radical parable into a fantasy of the privileged and wealthy in which we believe Christ calls us to apply bandages, throw money at the pain and injustice in the world, and trust that it is enough. In this light, this parable not only justifies but also glorifies drive-by charity as the pinnacle of Christ's command to love thy neighbor because in this story, we think Jesus is encouraging us to be like the Samaritan. 
but he is not. Jesus in this parable isn't asking us to go and do likewise so that we can be charitable. His point is much more subtle. Of course we are to bind the wounds of the wounded. Of course we are to take care of the oppressed and the downtrodden. We all know that this is what God asks of us. Works of charity and mercy are a given in the life of faith. Even the lawyer in the story knows this without a second thought. So no, I don't think the point of this parable is for us to be do-gooders. Instead, when Jesus tells the lawyer to go and do likewise, he is asking the lawyer to go and imitate the Samaritan, his cultural enemy. He is asking the educated lawyer to sit at the feet of the other in order to learn the way of salvation. He is asking this myopic man to see the people he despises most are the very people who hold for him the key to eternal life. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life, the lawyer asks. See your enemy as your teacher, Jesus answers through the parable. Jesus doesn't want us to be the good Samaritans, rather Jesus wants us to know who the Samaritans are in our own lives. And then he asks us to do the hard work of seeing them as humans, not as others, as teachers, not as our students, as the heroes who offer us salvation rather than the victims who need our saving help. How horrifying it must have been for the studied lawyer to have no choice but to admit that the dog, the Samaritan, was the answer to Jesus' question and to his own original question about his own salvation. Notice that at the end the man cannot even bring himself to utter that distasteful word Samaritan, preferring instead to say the one who showed him mercy. The lawyer had begun by addressing Jesus as the teacher, and Jesus has redirected the lawyer to his enemy as his true teacher. That is, if the man honestly wanted to learn what it meant to live an eternal life. But the lawyer could not even bring himself to acknowledge that the one who showed him mercy was indeed the Samaritan, his enemy. Now we all have our own cultural enemies, and we all have our derogatory names for them. They are slurs based upon race, on sexuality, on class, or political preference. And progressives, let's not forget our favorites like redneck and right-wing nutjob. The parable of the Samaritan asks us to confess first that we even have these cultural enemies. Be it an undocumented immigrant, a gay person, a poor person, a rural gun rights advocate, or a staunch Republican. And then it asks us to see that our salvation lies in loving these enemies enough to be willing to learn something from them. The problem is that we don't want to learn from our enemies. We don't want them to be our teachers because if we're willing to learn from them, if we're willing to take the time to listen to their stories, then it will become difficult to demonize them, to blame them for all that ails our country and our own lives, to rage at them from afar. But then what will the world do with our own and the world's woundedness when we have no one to blame for our problems? Perhaps in that moment, we will find ourselves in the story. Because we are each the beaten one on the roadside, in need of salvation from our enemies. We are each the Samaritan with the power to save our enemies by loving them. In other words, this parable asks us to do the unthinkable. It asks us both to heal and to be healed by our neighbors, our sisters and brothers, and those we despise. It asks us to live an eternal life today. It asks us to live on earth as it is in heaven.